Good day folks. Well, for the, the, today's repair video, we have a Bose iPod station. Um, I just looked it up online and the nearest equivalent model is nearly $600. It's not a cheap bit of kit. Um, made in America, or designed in America, made in Mexico. And this one, I don't know if it'll be an easy fix or not. It's awfully flimsy in there and somebody's been pulling the iPod out at an angle and it's broken the pins on this micro connector. I'm thinking it might be quite terminal if it's torn traces off the board. Like these things generally surface mounted. But we'll rip this thing apart and have a look. There's some PCB and stuff inside there too. This whole front bit's a bit floppy. But it's still hanging in there. I've got the power supply and everything for it. I just don't have an iPod to plug into it. I've never bothered with one. But I'll know just by looking at it if it's bad or not. Might be able to buy that little board strip for hopefully less than the retail price because some of them, that's up to a grand for the Series 10. The portable one's 549 and the standard one's 499 This might be a standard because it doesn't have uh, batteries or anything in it. Yeah, that one there's lithium ion batteries, so. This is the four, $450 model. It's still pretty expensive. Let's open her up and have a look. Okay, there's a heap of stuff sh sealed inside an RF shielding can. It, doesn't even, it even says do not reuse on it. <laughs> I'm guessing it doesn't like being taken apart. But that's not what I'm interested in. This is quite good because it's all on one separate little control board. I'm guessing that can be bought as a replacement part. Under there are some very micro fine wires. I'll try and carefully separate this plastic, but that all comes off as one piece. It's even attached through, um, they've actually melted the plastic and permanently attached it to this piece of board, so that might be a cheap replacement part compared with buying a whole new unit. Uh, this isn't mine, I'm just doing it for uh, one of the guys at work. Uh, he bought it ages ago and it's obviously used it well, but improperly removing the iPod has bent and broken this connection strip which is very delicate it's just micro circuitry inside that the pins are tiny I'm not going to be able to resolder it myself but I will definitely try and source a uh, replacement board for a good price okay I pulled the board off and just to show you the pins that were broken I resoldered them on there there's six of them all of them had broken away and if I poke those micro fine pins down there I can feel most of them are moving. They've broken away from the solder. And I don't know anyone who has a soldering iron fine, up, fine enough to do that, let alone the hand stability and patience. But I found them online. 31.50 in pounds, so it's probably about 50 bucks by the time it gets over here, but that's an awful lot less than 500. I'd say I'll be ordering one of them very soon. We've got One's for various other models. A piece of foam that goes underneath it. Even the Torx driver for 185. Might just throw one of them in too. That's how I get that. Might get a new overlay and a driver. And just charge it out to the customer. I'll be making a bit off it, so. Yeah. Might just for one of the guys at work, so I'll do it at mates' rates. But apart from that, that's the only problem. They just obviously seem to break this quite frequently. It sounds very common, especially when you, someone pulls it off any, any other way than straight up and down. It just breaks the connectors. Bend it over and snap. Well, that should do for now. I'll do a little update when I get the part. Thanks for watching.